Near Barkat, thank you so much for joining us during this trip to the U.S. Give us an outline of the purpose of this trip. Well, I proposed new legislation in Israel to prevent any consulates to be opened up in Jerusalem to serve the Palestinians, which is a Palestinian consulate. And the rationale behind it, and to explain to the American public, is why is that so important? When you enter the gates of Jerusalem today, you feel that respect. In a quarter square mile, you have more functioning mosques, synagogues, and churches than anywhere in the world. There's that respect of togetherness that will never function as a divided city. So once the embassy moved to Jerusalem, um, all of a sudden everything became much more quiet because people realized and it resonated that the city is a united city, the united, undivided capital of the Jewish people going back for history and looking into the future. Now, not a lot of people understand that once the embassy moved, it was a very clear declaration um, that the city will not be divided. It's bipartisan uh, in the United States. Everyone agrees uh, uh, that that's, that should have been done. However, opening a consulate in Jerusalem to serve the Palestinians, 80% negative in Israel, 80% of the people. Uh, support the legislation I proposed. And I think it's very important that people understand that we cannot allow uh, Palestinian uh, consulate serving the Palestinians in Jerusalem. It could be moved uh, to uh, Ramallah and to other places. That's fine. We don't care that America gives the Palestinian services, but not from the capital of Israel and the Jewish people, Jerusalem. So how far does this legislation go? I mean, the Palestinian Affairs Unit within the U.S. Embassy, were you going to push for that to be eliminated? The European consulates in Jerusalem, do you try to erase those? How far does this legislation purport to go? There's nothing new. Um, I think that all Israeli governments have always very clearly stated that the city of Jerusalem is the united, undivided capital of the Jewish people. I belong to the Likud party. Um, we have a huge majority. Uh, supermajority that uh, supports this in the Israeli public, and we expect our partners around the world to respect the internal issues uh, of Israel from that perspective. Now, um, again, I, I want to re-emphasize, we have no problem that America would serve them in Ramallah, um, in the, the headquarters of the Palestinian Authority right now, similar to many, many places in the world. This is something that, of course, we uh, are not against. Uh, but we are definitely against uh, challenging the unity of the city of Jerusalem. So beside the consulate, obviously the Iranian issue is at the top yeah. of any Israeli agenda. What, what else, are you, and who else will you be talking to on this trip? Let, let's first make it very clear, okay? Iran has very clearly stated that they want to wipe Israel off the map. I challenge the Americans to think, what would you negotiate? What kind of deal would America negotiate with the Iranians if they clearly say, that they're going to wipe America off the map. I mean, there's only one thing you could do, okay? Make sure they do not have a bomb. No deal. No deal. There's not, no reason to work a deal with them once they say they want to kill you. I mean, from Israel's perspective, you know, we uh, took out the nuclear uh, plant in Iraq in 81. Similarly, we did the same with Syria. We must not allow Iran to have a nuclear bomb, period. What is that to negotiate? We, some, you know, some, us Israelis don't understand. What is it to negotiate? And if you negotiate, the Iranians will tell you what you want to hear and will do what they need to do. It's part of the strategy, um, um, and that's what they want to accomplish. And I sort of ask myself, when will uh, our friends in America realize that the tough neighborhood of the Middle East works differently. It's not a, you don't negotiate a win-win deal with these folks. These guys want to wipe us off the map. By the way, we're in the same line um, as the moderate Arab states around Iran and the West, Europe and the United States. We're in the same list. Maybe we're higher on the list, but very, it, it must be very, very clear. The West is in the same list of uh, wiping out, you know, of, of wipeouts uh, in Iran. It's just the order is a bit different. We're first in line. So who, who will you be delivering that message to? To all our friends, through the public opinion, through uh, 
uh, the press. I've been meeting and, and will have many, many plans to meet uh, the press, the congressmen, uh, senators from uh, both sides of the aisle. There's no doubt that the presidency of Donald Trump was good for Israel, but at the same time, relations with the Democratic Party suffered as a result. Some blame your boss, the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. How much of that criticism do, do you accept? And beyond that, how do you go about restoring relations with the Democratic Party? First of all, it's in the best interest of the United States of America and Israel to be as much bipartisan as possible. So when you talk about issues that re reflect on Israel, we expect the Americans to respect our views. When you talk about issues that are important to America, you expect from us to follow your lead. This is a delicate issue. I'll give you an example, okay? The United States of America has very, very clear, uh, clearly stated that the, the, the China is a big threat to the world. And you will see that Israel works with the United States on that issue because I, we understand how important it is. And by the way, we think that the United States uh, is probably right on this point. Uh, and we have to work together delicately, wisely, but we have to work together. Similarly, when you talk about the future of the Middle East and the region, um, how to negotiate with the Palestinians, what to do with Iran, we would like to see the United States let us lead the philosophy of how to maintain peace and quiet in our region. Mind you that Israel struck deal, a peace deal with Egypt 40 years ago, still there, and 25 years ago with Jordan. Uh, and the new uh, Abraham Accord Many of the reason, one of the big reasons why it happened is because we had to be very bad with the bad guys and good with the good guys. So this is something we hope uh, that the United States of America and Israel will know how to work that relationship and in, a, in a bipartisan way as much as possible. It is a healthy relationship to maintain. It's not easy, but we have to do it. Last question for you. You and the current Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, both came of age during the time of Startup Nation. It's where you made your original fortune. Uh, Prime Minister Bennett has credited his time in high tech uh, for giving him the leadership skills and, and knowledge uh, to excel in politics. Do you have the, the same view and do you, you feel there's a future for high tech entrepreneurs to enter the, the political realm? Well, I certainly feel that uh, the entrepreneurs from the high tech sector come with added value. We come with tools, uh, with you know, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, I could talk about myself, that I feel that uh, when I was mayor of Jerusalem for a decade, um, once you know how to master politics, you have a huge advantage in terms of changing uh, course and uh, improving the quality of uh, leadership and, and moving new in in initiatives. So I think as an entrepreneur that understands the global market, you have an advantage once you know how to master politics. So I would love to see more entrepreneurs join the public sector. There's a lack of those skills, and we need them. Former Jerusalem mayor, current member of Knesset, Nir Barkat from the Likud party. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you Good very luck much. on the rest of this trip. Thank you.